The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that whoever builds a mosque for Allah, Allah will build for him a similar house in Jannah. And we know the great reward that will not only be gained, but rather will fill your grave after your death. Whenever someone prays there, whenever someone gives shahada in the masjid, whenever someone learns something in the masjid, yes, that will be something that you'll have on your scale. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you guys doing? Recently, science journalist and retired zoologist Richard Dawkins has made an attempt to become relevant again in the last moments of his life by speaking about Islam. Let's take a look at the video and come back and respond in kind. <laughs> the, the way women are treated, I mean, Christianity is not great about that. It's had its problems with female vicars and female bishops and things. But there's an active hostility to women, which is promoted, I think, by the holy books of Islam. I'm not talking about individual Muslims, who, of course, are quite, quite different. But the, but the doctrines of Islam, the Hadith and the, and the Quran, is fundamentally um, hostile to women, hostile to gays. Um, and uh, I find that I like to live in a culturally Christian country, although I do not believe a single word of the Christian faith. Let's really assess what this man is saying, because he's made a few assertions, hasn't he? And this is uh, typical of Richard Dawkins to make a surgeon and not back them with evidence. He mentioned the Quran, he mentioned the Sunnah, he mentioned the Hadith. However, he didn't actually provide any evidence of what he is saying. Now, we all know Islam has a diametrically opposed, in many ways, view on, say, homosexuality or the morality thereof than, let's say, liberal uh, societies and so on. That's something which is taken for granted. We all know that. We also know that there is some level of if you like, a managerial hierarchy in the family setting and otherwise between men and women in Islam. But to go further than this and to say that Islam is hostile towards women, hostile towards gays, and then to compare it with Christianity, well, actually, the same kind of criticism from a liberal paradigm can be made about Christianity in its literal and orthodox formats, both Catholicism and Protestantism, and Judaism, in fact, regarding the two very issues that he mentioned from a liberal and feministic paradigm. So one could say that on a liberal, atheist, secular analysis, for example, the verse in Timothy which talks about the man being the head of the household or, or that man shall not, uh, not lie with other man and the destruction of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Those are things that you'll find in the Bible. So to compare Islam and Christianity and then to use those liberal talking points as they are, liberal talking points with a small l uh, against them is actually a weak argument to say the least and Richard Dawkins is a coward because he has not been able to argue his position as a zoologist because that's what he is I mean why is a zoologist talking about religion anyway why is he talking about theology why is he talking about philosophy why is he talking about all those things in the first place but let's say he does want to engage in those discussions instead of being brave and gallant and having uh, the intellectual courage of standing forth in front of someone who could oppose his views and challenge them, he just makes a few sneaky remarks on the radio. Well, as I say, we'll see what happens when you die, because that moment is coming soon. We could all die soon. I could die, you could die, but you're more likely to die much quicker than I because of your age. And so you should be thinking about really what's going to happen after your death. But one thing I will say is this. In one of your books, The Blind Watchmaker, Richard, you mentioned that there is no such thing as morality. There is no such thing as good or evil. There is only pitless indifference. So really and truly, if you read The God Delusion, which is your seminal work, which is interesting because why is a zoologist writing a seminal work on issues nothing to do with zoology or science? And when you spoke to Dennis Do Noble, who is seen as one of the esteem uh, esteemed uh, biologists in the United Kingdom, in fact, in the world, and he rubbished your ideas and criticized you and put you in your spot and humiliated you intellectually. And he, in fact, is the one who invented this label, science journalist, vis-a-vis -vis you and your efforts. You really couldn't withstand that kind of criticism.
But if you read your book, The God Delusion, most of it is actually a tax Ba are based on morality but if you do not believe in an objective morality and that everything is pitless and different so whether one is hostile to gays one is hostile to women one is hostile to men or children or animals or anyone else that is according to you pitless indifference it doesn't matter if they are uh, you know hostile or not hostile peaceful or hostile it doesn't matter finally i will say this the entitlement in your speech is quite clear for you to speak in this way and to think of the United Kingdom as kind of like your garden or your backyard, I wouldn't want to see this there and I wouldn't see that there. It shows you that you don't actually have respect for the democratic process. She kept asking you, what if, uh, you know, Britain became a Muslim majority country, so on and so forth. I mean, if you cared about the principles of democracy and so on and so forth, then you would you would actually answer in a, in a way which would be commensurate with that. You'd say, well, if that's the will of the majority of this and that, which shows you that you cannot avoid the in-group, out-group tribal dynamics. In your last days on this planet, probably, or weeks, if you're lucky, months, you know, maybe, uh, in those last moments of your withering life, you've decided to attach yourself culturally with a religion that you've spent a long time trying to oppose, which is Christianity, which shows a lot about you. Finally, I will say, the debate offer has always been put on the table to you, Richard. We've always said, if you really want to speak about Islam, the Muslim community is willing to have that conversation. And before you die, maybe you'd want to summon the testicular fortitude, although... Maybe that has withered as well to do so. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hey you, are you wasting your time on social media again? Your brothers and sisters in Islam net from Norway are establishing a masjid, a dawah center. Establishing a masjid to convey the message of Islam is one of the best deeds a Muslim can do. There's a huge need for it in Norway. You know this and I know this. So that makes the reward even greater. So give generously and Allah Azza wa Jal will give you even more.